All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Killing the Coding interview introduction. Uh, this is the first session. We're just going to kind of go over some like basic concepts in you know, learning for the, uh, these things. Uh, our host is Arjun. However, he was not able to make it today. Elbert is here to take over for uh, Arjun, and we really appreciate that. So before we continue, I'm going to share some stuff. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you guys aren't in the Nighthack server, because this is, you know, a Nighthacks event, uh, I can, I'll send the link in the chat, but just go to nighthacks.org slash discord, and this is the discord. Uh, let me see. And if you go here, you go to club information, you can see all of our stuff for this current semester. Um, and this is really all I wanted to cover. Uh, we have our general body meetings Thursdays at 730. This is like our main workshop. Sometimes it's a general body meeting. That's just like where our biggest meeting, our current main weekly meeting. We just started a new program and I think Rob is here too. Um, Rob started our Hello World workshop series that are Tuesdays at 7.30 PM. These are beginner focused series, you know, essential skills and technologies for software development, computer science. So if you ever feel lost during our general body workshops, this is a definitely a great series for you. Uh, then we have what you're at right now, Killing the Coding interviews every Saturday at 2 PM. Uh, then we have our mentorship and projects. Uh, we actually have Abraham here on the call. He's our one of our uh, workshops, I mean, uh, projects directors. Uh, they are currently like select or alternating Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Watch the announcements for specific times. So one-on-one -on -one mentorship uh, as you can be the mentee to get that help or you can give someone else the help and get that experience for you know resume building and just professional development for yourself. Uh, then we have our operations meetings today at 4 p.m. Every Saturday at 4 p.m. we have our operations meetings. That is if you wanna help run the club, uh, you know, make a difference and, you know, get that, get that experience behind your belt. It definitely looks good for interviews. looks great for resumes. Uh, communications meets at Sundays at 2 PM. Uh, that is specifically the communications team. That's part of operations. And then Fridays at 8 PM, we have our social events. Yesterday we had a Netflix night. We had a pretty good turnout. We watched Scott Pilgrim versus the world. That was a very fun movie. I had never watched it before and I thought it was fantastic. Um, all the links, are on our link tree, nighthacks.org slash link tree. That is the only link you'll ever need for anything related to Nighthacks. Everything is on there. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat, pop them in chat, DM me, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool. So I guess we'll just get started then. Um, so hi, I'm Albert. I am covering for Arjun uh, for this Killing Coding Review uh, workshop. Um, Arjun did send me a analysis PowerPoint uh, but Harold kind of covered all the announcements. But there is one slide that Arjun wanted me to show. The second show the screen. Two. Okay, do you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, cool. So, um, pretty much a key takeaway from this slide. I mean, uh, Arjun couldn't make it today. Uh, he's leaving it to me. But um, the key takeaway of this last paragraph: uh, learning how to interview properly is really is a really important skill. Um, even for him during his American Express interview, yeah, American Express interview, um, Avery said that even after you graduate, if you want to switch or have any mobility, you really need, you're going to thank yourself for having, for practicing interviewing. Um, and that's kind of true. No matter what point you are, it's always good to keep learning and, um, sharpen your skills, really. Um, so with that out of the way, let's start this. So, uh, how it's going to work is most, it's just going to be like, uh, short lecture, and then if you guys have any questions, um, go ahead and ask them. Um, and then we'll do a few lead code problems as we go. Um, yeah, so we're just doing a data structure review. Uh, we're going to assume basic knowledge of static variables in Java, so like integers, booleans, characters, doubles, basics, uh, and that you know how to at least write hello world in Java, just like basic syntax. Um, so we're going to start with arrays. Arrays are definitely the simplest data structure out there. Um, they're, they have fixed and bounded size unless you reallocate memory. So what this means is that um, you define the size at compile time. Um, now, this, I mean, there are hard limits to this. So if you're indexing an array, you got to make sure you're within bounds. If not, then you get out of bounds exceptions. Um, and in most cases, uh, the language will already implement this for you. So like C, Java, they already have this implemented, and it's really good for beginners. Um, it's really like a foundational like building block for everything after this. Um, 
And then we have maps. Um, maps are a, more of a advanced object or advanced dash, dash structure. Um, so this is kind of similar to an array such in the way that you have an index um, and some values that you're storing. So um, off, on the slides, uh, map, it, a map maps keys to values. Um, maps in Java, they're an interface that takes place in the dictionary class, which is an abstract class. And then the advantage of this is that you have an amortized um, O1 lookup. So you get really fast lookups, deletions, searches. Um, and you can kind of use these interchangeably with arrays depending on the question. Um, uh, for example, there's an example later on from one of the code problems where you can use an array or you can use a map uh, for sample code where you're using a map. Um, and I'm just gonna pull the Java docs real quick so we can kind of familiarize ourselves with the method. So let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so we have clear that just removes everything in the, in the map. Um, yeah, it contains keys. So your keys are your indices and then your values are your values. Um, you, can, you can get the values using an index or your key. You can check if the value exists in your map or you can check if a key is used in your map. Uh, and then, of course, you have your, your typical getters, setters, and then um, removals. Um, yeah. So, check chat real quick. Let's chat. Okay. Java's maps, um, it depends, actually. So, um, you have different implementations of maps. So, like what Joe said, you have tree maps, and then for our case, there are hash maps. Um, hash maps, um, the difference between tree and hash maps. So trees, um, they're inherently uh, ordered, really. So like on insertion, they'll be ordered uh, as in a tree. Um, I don't want to get too far in trees because I think Arch is going to cover that later. So I don't want to say, I don't want to take too much room. Yeah, map is the interface. Um, and of course, and, and again, Arch is going to cover, yes, Arch is going to cover, um, object-oriented programming in a later workshop. Um, so I'll make sure he covers that just so you guys know what interfaces are. But um, your object-oriented programming class should cover that. But um, yeah, to go back to the question, um, maps can be sorted, unsorted. Hash maps are unsorted. Tree maps are sorted. Um, yeah, OK. So we have all these. We have the array methods, but these are kind of basic. Um, and then, yeah, okay. So let's get into some problems. Actually, I haven't already had this up. That's crazy. Okay, so we're gonna start with two sum. Um, if you guys have any questions, just ask them. And if you guys want me to draw these out, like conceptually, I can do that. Um, yeah, okay. Let me just make sure I chat with you. Okay, so this problem, we're given an array. So in Java, this is how arrays are passed. Um, and then you have a target. So the goal of this, the, this entire problem is we're given an array, we're given a target, give return two indices of two numbers that add up to this target. So um, one in, in view, oh, one um, interview tip I have any, for the, like questions in general. Um, you always want to ask your interviewer about your inputs and like how they're passed to you, like types or if they're sorted or not. Um, questions like that um, are pretty important. Now, for this situation, it doesn't really matter as much, but it's just something to keep in mind. And also um, checking for edge cases and base cases, but we'll see, we'll see that as I go. Um, okay, so for example, one, we're given an array of 2, 7, 11, 15, and we are, want our target to be, and our target is 9. Um, the output's zero and one because number sub zero, number sub one. This is how we index arrays. These add to nine, so we return this. Um, yes. Um, okay. So example two, same deal. Uh, we want six. We have three, two, and four. We're going to return one and two. Oh yeah, yeah. So with the arrays, your numbering is going to start at zero. Um, so your first number will be at index zero, then one, two, and three. Um, 
Yeah, so same deal here. We're going to run through, we'll find it at two and four. So one and two, we're going to turn that. And then, of course, same deal here. Um, now, there are a few ways to solve this. One way we call it the naive solution. Um, this doesn't really give that, it doesn't really give a good runtime. What you could do here is you run through the array n times. So where n is the size of your array. So you start at two, you do two plus seven, two plus 11, two plus 15. Okay. You would, well, you would solve it on your first run because you had two and seven, but say you didn't, say it was like 10 or 11, it was 10 or 20, something like large. Then you get seven, you check 11, 15, 11, 15. So that's not good runtime and you can solve this in one pass. Um, so, you see, and the cool thing with code is that it'll import all the um, classes for you. Like normally you'd have to write an import Java util star, but lead code has it for you. So, um, we know that our result is going to be an array of two. So we're just going to do an array. We're just going to call this result actually. Result new and equal. So this can be our result array. We're just going to pass this back. So for simplicity, I'm just going to do this. Let's create it later. Boom. Um, now, an easy way to well, the best way to solve this is again, doing it in all in one pass. So our methodology is this, we're gonna go through each number in the array. We're gonna subtract our target with the number we have in the array. Um, we're gonna store that difference and we're gonna check if that difference exists in our scene values. Um, so what are our scene, we're gonna store our scene values in the map. And the reason why we're gonna use the map is because um, we need to store our, the values we're looking for and the index and not the index and the value. That's what, so it's kind of like inverting it. Um, so in this case, we're gonna use um, a hash map. Again, this is, kind of, this is one version of maps in Java. Um, there's tree and hash, but for most cases, a hash map will work. Um, because again, we don't care about order. So hash map, yeah. hash map. We're going to call this a map. So that's how you make these. Um, and then to do all the past, rate your entire array. And what I'm doing here is kind of something that's used kind of common in object oriented programming. So um, when you, what, Eventually, like again, Arjun will go over object oriented programming, but there are classes and within classes you have methods, and this is kind of one way of getting the length of our array. Um, gonna keep... So basically, what this line is doing, we're just going to run through our entire array up to our length. This will be our index for our nums array. So, our first step we want to see if the number we're at, if we're going to see if our target minus the number we're at is stored in our map of scene values. So if map contains and then we have target minus our nums sub i, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our um, result value because what this means is that, so say we had we have the example where we have two and seven. Well, we've already seen two, and we already did two, we already did nine minus two. So this is already seen in our, um, it's already stored in our map. So the idea is when we get to seven, we'll do, okay, nine minus seven. All right, does, that exi does two exist in our map? Okay, cool, it does, we store it. That's kind of the idea here. So um, result zero equal. So then this will return our value. Our value in this case is our index. Um, okay. And then for the starting index um, or an ending, end index, just be i. And so that's for the case where we do find our number. So obviously we're not gonna run that in the first, we're not gonna get to this case in the first step. So, and also in the cases where we don't see it at all. So else, 
we're just going to do map put um, i so our value that we're at and the index is for that and then this should work let me double check this um result array we have a map storing all the values we've seen uh when to run our array if we have the value we're going to set these two else okay Let's see if it works. Oh. I'm not going to make this going to run through all the test cases, and we don't. I don't want to like hold you guys up. Okay. So, what was our next problem? Rotate image. Okay. So, rotate image. Um, this is just another array problem. Now we have a two dimensional array. Um, so, what we want to do here is rotate this. So do we want to do we want to give uh give us some time to kind of read over the question. Oh yeah yeah sure. Okay that's good let's do it. Um, so like Prom's saying we're just gonna be rotating these clockwise. Um, so with matrices it's there there is a way to do this so um, what we can do to kind of rotate it ninety degrees clockwise is uh transpose it and then um reverse the ordering. So what I mean by transposing is we want to flip our indices. So say we have one here, we want to come this way. Um, we can't just say, oh, you're at zero, go to the end. You can't just do that because then you'd have three up here and then that's no good. So instead what we're doing is transposing, which is you have an X, Y coordinate. Now we just flip it. So your coordinate is Y and X. So say we had two, so it's at zero, so zero and then one. Well, now we want to make it at one zero. So it'd be down here. And then we want to flip it so that two ends up here. So same thing works here. We transpose it, nothing happens, but we do want to flip it over here. Um, seven, we want to flip our indices. So we have zero, two. So we want two, zero. So here, and then we reverse it. It flips back here. So to do this, um, First thing we want to do is, yeah, we want to we want to transpose and then reverse. So transpose, reverse. Can everyone see my code? Okay, you guys want to go bigger? Why is it? okay? So we must solve some two steps. Um, and it is kind of good to kind of organize your thought process like this, um, just so you don't miss anything. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to do our transposition step. So n equals zero. And I can say matrix uh, dot length here just because I know that it's an n by n matrix, so I don't need to worry about like the weird case where I have a three by four matrix or a five by seven. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. so what I want to do is I want to store the value first. So it's kind of like the whole thing where it's like when you want to swap values, you're going to need a third value to kind of hold it. So I'm going to call this temp. Make this equal to matrix. I J. So we're going to store, say, this value. And then we're going to do matrix sub. J. Oh, wait. No, it should be J. Okay. okay, so we have matrix of J sub I equal to. Uh, and then J and I and J. So this effectively swaps what we have. So that's the whole swapping step where it's like, okay, we have seven. We want to bring up to here. We have two. We have four. We got to bring up to here. Same idea. Yeah. T TMP, right? Oh, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, TMP. 
So we're just gonna be sw we're just bringing them up. We're be flipping the um, coordinates. Okay. So now we want to reverse our values. So what? Let's go. So here we want to reverse it. Um, so actually, um, we want to reverse each row. So we actually don't need to go all the way up to the end of the link. We need to go all the way up to the um, So we're going to do another temporary variable because we'll be swapping them around. Uh, now I'm just going to do to same value. I and J. We're going to store that. And then J. This is going to be equal to the matrix, same row, but we're going to do the little column that's um, kind of opposite. So minus J. Um, so what this means is that, say we have, you know, let me draw this out real quick. Actually, I don't draw it out. But um, we had one, four, and seven. So say we were at one, but we want to bring it back here. So our matrix length, which would be here, minus J, which would be like our offset from the middle, and then minus one because we're going from zero to N minus one, so we need to bring it back one. And then, for the value that we replace the matrix dot length um, minus j minus one, uh, we're just going to put temp there. So, so we had to output it. Okay. So to output this. Um, we just go uh, row by row. Uh, are we just printing? I think we're just printing it. Um, yeah. And um, Wait, I don't. I don't think you're printing it. I think you're just like changing it in memory. Maybe. And it senses it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if this works. Should work. It's always a little, little nerve wracking to wait for it to kind of run. Okay. So we do get in there. That's fine. What is it saying? Line nine. Ah. Um, it's a J, it should be J plus plus and the. Ah, yes. Yeah. Right. Thanks. I'm here too. That's fine on copy and paste from before. You don't want to do that. But okay. Hang on. Three, two, one. Hmm. Okay. I need to fix the transmission stuff. Give me a sec. Um I J J and I. Shouldn't you be going only halfway during the transpose? No, because you need to flip all of them. Okay. It's actually supposed to start at I, I think. Because. Yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, I might just skip over to the string ones just because I don't want to. I want to kind of fish in PowerPoint. And if I get time again, then I'll come back to uh, Spiral Matrix. But it's more or less the same as like array manipulation. Um, so, okay, so strings, um, there's different implementations depending on the language. So, um, I'm assuming most of us have taken intro to C, uh, this is kind of more beginner, uh, workshop. So I'm going to work off that. I mean, we do, we are doing it in Java, but, um, so in the C, all strings are stored basically in array of characters. Um, once you get to Java, there is a string object, but those are immutable. Um, but they do have their own little methods for you to like handle them. Um, the nice thing about it, again, is like it's already implemented in Java, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, 
But yeah, uh, I'm gonna run through the Java docs real quick because strings are kind of their own weird thing. Um, so if you wanna kind of index your, if you wanna get characters off of your string, char is pretty good. You can convert it over to a char array. So there's tr to a char array. You can do substrings, you can do length, you can um, pretty much put your string if you want to, you can change the case, um, stuff like that. So, What's the problem that we're doing? We are doing reverse string. Okay. So reverse string. Okay. So with reverse string, I'll just give you guys a second to read it and then we'll run into it. Oh, how long do questions? Sorry. Uh, how long? Um, not just from lead code. There's some other places. So there's Code Wars, there's Code Signal. That was eBay. They did their own thing. Um, there's Hacker Rank, um, tons of places. Um, really, I mean, again, like Lead Code is probably the best place to kind of do these questions to practice because everyone does, like, there's a lot more people who do pull from it, but um, really any practice is good practice. But yeah, I kind of do recommend. If anyone by any chance is watching this on the YouTube, someone just asked in the chat, how often do you get leak code questions asked in interviews? And it is these types of questions are asked all the time in interviews, but sometimes, you know, they might be from like more similar to hacker rank and uh, the other things Albert mentioned. But yeah, these types of questions are all over technical interviews. That's why leak code is so highly regarded and everyone loves to grind leak code. Mm -hmm. And also to add on that for interviews, it's not just leak code. Um, from my personal experience uh, with my interviews, um, they for technical questions they'll ask um, they'll ask about properties or aspects about certain types of languages. So I've gotten a question about like, oh, what's the difference between C and C plus plus? I mean, not C plus not C++, Java and C plus plus in terms of memory management. So it's kind of like not just like, hey, do you know how to use the language? It's more like, do you know the language? So things like that. Um, because it's not about like, oh, like just growing out lead code. It's about, you know, knowing what you're doing and knowing the tool that you have. Because again, at the end of the day, these are all just tools and how well you do is really dependent on how well do you know your tool, if that works, if that's a good analogy. Um, and like just said, understanding the process is the best strategy. You don't want to just memorize code. You want to understand the problem solving process. And that's kind of the entire purpose of why Arjun wanted to put this all together. And, I really do think that he's doing a good thing with this. Um, yeah. Um, now, of course, with interviews, you also have behavioral questions. So make sure you guys kind of practice those too. Um, yeah. yeah. Is everyone ready? Do you think doing a lot of these problems helps you see the pattern for other questions they've seen before? Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, there's only so many problems you can ask. Um, not saying it's, it's a small amount. It's there's definitely a ton of questions, but after a while, they do kind of all become the same. Um, so for this problem of reverse string, there are other problems that aren't exactly asking you to reverse a string, but the way you manipulate a string, the way you run through a string, is similar to how other problems want you to run through. Um, yeah. Um, again, Arjun will get into the problem solving techniques, but um, from my experience, yeah, they they're kind of the same. Um, Another amazing resource, Cracking the Coding Interview. It's a book, it's on Amazon. I'm gonna pop a link in the chat, but this book is the holy grail of interview prep books for this type of field. There's also Cracking the PM Interview if you're into PM stuff. If you're into PM stuff, direct message me, because. Yeah, I definitely get myself, yeah. Um, but definitely practice. Um, and I know I feel like I've been there before, like I started, I didn't know what to do, but it's all about starting and learning. Um, it was in the CS Discord, but someone did say like, you don't want to just look at the problem and solve it right there. You want to look at the problem, look at the solution first, come back to it a few days later to, to like see if you really understand that problem. And definitely YouTube is a great resource. Um, there's back to back, back to back suite. That's a good channel. Um, geeks for Geeks, they're, they're all right. Um, but yeah, ton, there's a ton of resources out there. But um, yeah, again, like, you don't have to solve the problem on the first try. You, it's okay to look at the solution, come back to it, like actually understand the solution, read through, take notes on it, study it, and then come back like a few days later and see if you really understand that. That's how you know you really learned it. And 
it's cheesy, but the best way the the best way for you to learn something is to teach it. That's so it kind of forces you to like really know the topic you're teaching. Um, so yeah. Um, but definitely start though. Like it's a little jarring, but yeah. Okay. So let's do a verse string. So there's a few ways to do this. Um, the per personally, the way I would do it um, is to just kind of have a two pointer approach. So for my the way I would solve this is have a pointer or like have an index going here and here and having type of variable and then you just swap them as you go and you run the string that way. Um, um, another way to do it is doing string splitting, uh, but that's for cases where you could have spaces in there. Um, for the, an interest of time and questions, I just kind of want to run through like my simple solution and then move on to the next um, problem because the next problem is kind of one that's kind of common. So. Um, like I said, we're going to have a temporary character. Oh, one side note about these string questions. Um, in an actual interview, you definitely want to ask them how they're giving you the string. Um, so like I mentioned earlier in Java, there are string objects. Those are immutable. And you need to ask the interviewer, like, hey, how am I being passed this string? Because if they just say, like, string object, then there's nothing you can do about that. You, and if they really, especially if they want you to do something in place, uh, what they mean by in place is not by, is, um, not making an extra copy of it. But um, yeah, you definitely want to ask questions about how you're, how you're getting your inputs and stuff like that. Um, so luckily for us, we have a character array. So we can't just say, can't do anything. Um, so yeah, um, temporary character. Because like I said, my methodology is to just run on both sides and swap them if I need to. Um, so we're just going to keep it blank for now. We're going to have a start and that's going to equal zero and end, which is going to be stop link, I believe. It's next one. Um, and then I'll start less than um, Basically, how we're controlling this loop is we're going to run up until the middle. Um, if we have an odd number, word, then it's going to be the same um, index value. And you don't really need to swap because you're literally pointing the same thing. And if it's an even, then you will flip your indices and then you'll bring it up. So that's that's kind of like our exiting condition. Um, yeah. So ah, okay. So while well, starts this in our end, so we're going to do temp equals our s sub start. And then we're going to do start equals yes, my cursor is coming up. S -N, and then s n. I think that should work. I do have another solution here in case mine doesn't work. I kind of came with this one on the spot. Maybe not the best idea, but we'll see what happens. Um, so the idea here is start less and end. So we have a start, we have our end. We're at H, we're at O, we're going to swap them. So we got O and H. Um, e to L, we got L, we got E, L. Same thing, so we're just going to drop out. You have to um, uh, increment and decrement start and end. Yeah. I think that's the only thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just explaining real quick. Yeah, thank you for that. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. No, you're fine, you're fine. It's good to have someone checking in. I mean, obviously, you're not going to have it for an interview. So, thanks, Joe. I think that should be it. You come back and then. Again, this doesn't work if it's like multiple words. Um, but yeah, it works in this case. Cool. And then, um, is there going to be questions right now, by the way? Oh. Yeah, you can make it, like Joe said, yes, you can turn actual strings into character arrays. But if they're asking you to do something with in place or with oh, one extra memory, then you can't do anything like that. Um, and I guess I should mention what these O of 1 and O of N things mean, uh, in case people don't know. Uh, if you guys take, when you guys take CS1, you'll learn it. But basically, O of 1 means some constant number of extra memory. So really, anything that's not the size of your string. 
we call that n. So O of n extra memory would be like, hey, making copies of your string. And in terms of runtime, it's like, okay, O of n, you're gonna run through your entire string. O of one, you're gonna run for like maybe, you know, like half or like some constant number of operations for that um, function. Um, that's what we're for. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. So I know that strings are immutable. So yeah. is there a way you can actually reverse them without like dipping into space complexity? Um, so Java does have a reverse function. I think it's within the string. Is it? Let me double check this. I thought it did because Java has like a lot of things in there, but. I know there's collections.reverse, but you'd have to do to list for that one. Yeah. Um, so no. I don't see it in the string class. Oh yeah, string builder. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can do a string builder. Um, but again, that might dip into your memory thing. Again, if they're gonna ask you to do some strings in place, it's good to ask, but I mean, they're probably gonna do in character array. If not, then that's kind of a tough one. Um, but yeah, so speaking of string builder, there are, so string builder is a class in Java. Um, and it, it is what, it, it's, it does what the name is. So like it'll help you build strings. Um, because again, these are immutable. So string builder will help you actually build custom ones um, that aren't declared whenever you type them out. Or I guess with input. Um, but yeah, that's something that, that's definitely something to look out for. Um, let's see. Yeah, they don't really want you to just, like Robert said, they don't want you to just call string reverse. Um, that's kind of looked down upon. And if you do it, they'll probably say something like, oh, do it by hand. It's like, okay. So it's kind of like, it shows that you know the language, but that's not really what they're looking for at, at that time. Yeah, um, usually you can ask for a clarification if, definitely ask if for they want it or not, yeah. Definitely ask for clarification. And it shows that you actually care about the problem you're solving too. Like you, like I'm not saying it's like bad if you don't have any questions, but it's kind of like, don't be afraid to ask questions. They won't think that, you know, you don't know the question or not. They just see it as like, oh, you really want to understand this. At least that's how I understand it. Um, yeah, with that out of the way, we have our favorite valid palindrome. <laughs> it's a meme at this point, but um, yeah. So I'm not gonna. Get, I'm not actually talking about the code for this one, but it's kind of this. Like, that was weird. It's kind of the same uh, principle. Uh, it's just in, th in this case, we're just gonna drop the spaces here. But I mean, for actual words like taco cat or like hello, not hello. That will that return a fit false. Taco cat, that's kind of a meme at this point, but it is a palindrome, so that will be true. Um, and real quick, if you don't know what palindrome is, a palindrome um, is a word or a sentence that is the same, what is it? It's, all, it's symmetric. So it's kind of like, if I write taco cat. The same forwards and backwards. Yeah, so if taco cat this way, okay, reverse this. Then you got taco cat. That's a palindrome. You can do a same thing with numbers. That's that's a whole other problem. <laughs> but um, yeah. So with palindrome, um, it's kind of the same thing, except for like in the case of leak code, you you have to ignore um, non-alphanumeric um, characters. Um, but yeah. So the idea is that like, you have a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Um, this is a palindrome because. If you take out the spaces and put them all into lowercase, then, and then if you reverse it, we get the same thing. Uh, with race car, race a car, same thing. So to do a problem like this, um, you can you can kind of tackle this a few ways. Um, you can just run through the string as is, and then have again two pointer approach. You want to have an end and beginning, and you want to check that they're the same at each step. Um, so you can do this without modifying the string, or you can kind of clean up the string before you start processing it. Um, it's just faster to like run through the string as is. Um, so actually, we can do this. So yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, how are we on time? Actually, does anyone have any questions before I do this? Because this one can take a little bit. So like I said, two-pointer approach. Um, now for things like this, we do want to check for base cases. I didn't really cover the whole base case thing here, but for this, or not base case, our edge cases, excuse me. Thanks, okay. Um, so with our edge cases here, 
we just want to check that our string is empty. We don't really want to mess with an empty string and kind of waste our time. So again, since we have a string now, like an actual string object, um, we have to do one special thing. We don't care about the space, but I mean, for the sake of time, complexity anyway, I'm not going to turn to a character, right? And so we're not really modifying anything. So if string length, length zero, then we're just going to return all. Actually, no. Be true. Because empty. Um, okay. So we have our start. One because still the numbering starts zero. Um, we can have mm. yeah, I'll just first the characters whatever. So our head character, and that's going to equal char at start, and then our end. So these are kind of our two pointers, so we're just going to bring them up. Um, yeah. So same idea with our that we were controlling our loop. It's just while our star is less than our end. And then um, actually, we want to set these later. Now think about it. Yeah, we're going to set these later. So that's when we capture our um, our uh, characters. So we have a few cases here. So if our head is in alphanumeric, then we gotta move up one. Same thing goes with our tail. So um, I'm gonna use the character class here. This is kind of like a wrapper class for um, our primitives or our static variables. Um, this kind of adds more functionality, like more methods we can use for our characters. So character is letter or digit because that's all we care about. And then our head. And actually, it's not going to be one of those. So not. And then sending goes with our tail character. Tail. And then end. So we've checked for if we have the space or any like symbol that isn't a letter or a digit. Now we want to um, check if um, what we have. We want to check if what we have is actually if they're the same characters. So it satisfies the palindrome rule. So if and again, since this is case. Um, like we don't care about the case, we're just gonna put all the lowercase just because so lower our head is not equal to so if these are not the same characters, we're just gonna back out of it. That's kind of faster than running through the entire thing. So, yeah. And then, so that's our check. And then, regardless, we're still going to like back up. Actually, that should not be plus plus. That should be minus minus. So, regardless, we're still going to move up and move. Or we're going to move up our start pointer and we're going to move back our end pointer. So, start our plus and minus minus. And then, if all goes well, we run through the loop without returning our false, then we return true. So. And then, oh, okay. So, semicolon, this is the Python. Um, what Robert asked is Java language of choice for doing the code. Um, 
that depends on the person. So we did we passed it, but um, it depends on the person. Depends on the language you're more comfortable with. So and it also come. Then you have the question of like, which which what type of language runs faster, and then that's another rabbit hole. But um, another rabbit hole. But um, like Joe said, really choose the language you're most comfortable with, and also what Sean said, you can pick any language. So these are all languages you can use for weak codes to C, C++, Java, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript. You have all these. So you, as long as it's like a language that's somewhat widely used, you're probably fine. Um, now again. And if you, do, if you use C for this, I mean, it's not impossible to do, but you definitely have a lot more code you need to write up. Like having a length function, that's going to be another loop you have to write, write on your own. Um, if it's a letter or a digit, you have to import the, um, you have to include the, is it char.h? Yeah, you need to include that. Um, C type, thank you. Um, but yeah. It all depends on the language you pick, but it's like at the end of the day, if you're more comfortable doing that, then go ahead. Like for competitive programming, C is king just because it runs faster than Java. Um, but again, it's if you decide to do something like that, I mean start with something you're more comfortable with and then eventually move up to a different language. Um, again, I personally choose Java just because I'm more comfortable using it. Um, is it the fastest thing ever? No, but I'm definitely more comfortable with it. And um, this one works for me. And then that, that might not, not necessarily be the same thing that works for you, but everyone's different and that's what matters. Um, so yeah, with that, that's kind of it for the leak code problems. Um, yeah, uh, any questions? Um, I have one, I guess. Do mm -hmm. you recommend like practicing the different leak code questions in different languages or just picking one and sticking with it? Since like in interviews, they'll mostly just ask you to stick with one language. Um, yeah, that's a good question, actually. So I would recommend picking one with one, picking one language and sticking with it. Um, uh, the interviewer they won't necessarily tell you what language to use, um, though. Like, if the language that they're using most at the actual like job for for their position is like C plus plus or Python, then it's like, well, you might you might have to learn that later. But they really want to see if you can solve a problem and. Again, use the tool you're most comfortable with and the one that you know the best, right? Um, so no, like I would definitely say stick with lang stick with one language that you're good with and roll with it. Um, now, if you're if you're doing lead code and like, oh hey, I actually like C plus plus more and you want to do C plus plus, go ahead. Um, most people most people will be able to understand it. Um, and again, they don't really ask for a specific language. Um, Jonathan asked, how can someone get familiar with these helper methods you use quickly? It's really, it really comes with practice. Um, and again, like I do kind of have the Java docs open on my own screen. So like this one, um, but um, for higher views and like some, some places, I know that you can look at documentation if you need to. Um, obviously you can't, you know, go to Stack Overflow and ask a question or look through the solutions. But they'll, they're okay with you looking at documentation. And again, this kind of comes with practice. So like for me, this kind of came from doing a lot of weak code and um, just me playing around with stuff. Um, but yeah. And like Joe said, there's problem, there's usually a method for everything in Java. Um, yeah. Especially for strings. String, you, if you're doing stuff with strings, you really need to know the helper methods. Um, one way I kind of memorize the difference between using length and length with parentheses um, is that actual objects. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna say that for Arjun because he is lecturing on that, but sneak peek. Um, these are all technically functions or methods. So normally if you have parentheses, that means, hey, it's a function call, a method call. An object has method calls. So that's how I kind of know it. Yeah, me too, me too, yeah. Um, again, oh. You, yeah, um, if it's like an uppercase character, like, or an uppercase word like string or it's an object, then it's probably a method call. If it's something kind of like a primitive, like an array, you can just use length without the parentheses. Um, Jonathan, I just asked this so I've never been exposed to. Yeah, um, you'll get exposed to them um, probably in OOP just a little bit, uh, but you'll definitely use them a lot more for, um, what is it? You'll 
definitely CS2. Uh, if you take operating systems, we do have one assignment where like you do have to use a lot of methods and like object oriented uh, programming strategies kind of, but um, you kind of, you've learned as you go. That's the thing with programming in general, the best way to learn is to practice um, and practice often. It's kind of like, it, it's definitely a skill that you get better at as the more, the, the more you do or like the more frequently you do it. Um, say you take like a two month break from coding, you're, you're not gonna forget everything, but you definitely wouldn't do as well as you could had you have been practicing throughout the two months. Um, let's see, I must use JavaScript, the standard library is definitely weaker than Java. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I don't know much about JavaScript, but um, from what you're saying, yeah, it's kind of like using C for this. It's definitely a lot more you have to do by hand. Um, and that's the thing, definitely, again, like one reason why I use Java is because there's a bunch of helper methods and it's a lot more that I can abstract away that I don't have to worry about on my own. Um, yeah, and definitely uh, what Jonathan said, using Python for interviewing legal code problems, that's, that's pretty popular. Um, just because it's a lot less to write. I mean, like for me, like look at how much I have to write for all these, but Python, it's a little more simplified and um, you don't really have to work, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have to worry much about type as, as often. Um, but again, teach your own. I mean, it's not a bad thing if you don't, if you don't use Python for interview. I mean, I didn't, um, but definitely use what you're comfortable with. Um, yeah, for sure. Like, don't like, there's a lot of talk out there. It's like, oh, you can, you should be using this language for these different reasons. Like, uh, it's, you know, no, like it's, it's personal preference. That's why there's like, there's no such thing as like the best programming language out there, it's all a preference. And again, you gotta use the tool that's right for the job. And I mean, again, that tool can differ, but it's like, again, there's no like one size fits all type of solution for this. All right, cool. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming out. This means a lot that you came out to our first session of Killing the Coding interview. Uh, just a reminder, we do have our operations meeting at 4 p.m. I know there are some people on the call who have applied for a director position. I definitely encourage you to come out at 4 p.m. The link is on our link tree. That's on, you know, everywhere, of course. Um, feel free to stick on the call if you just want to practice some more coding questions with some other people. Albert, you know, you don't have to say if you don't want to. Um, and yeah, this, so overall, we're just going to be chilling here if you want. And we have our operations meeting starting at four. That's in 54 minutes. I hope to see some of you guys there. Thank you guys for coming. And if you're not on the Discord, I'll pop that link in the chat. Uh, and have a good rest of your day. You guys are amazing.